I have many flaws. Top among them is that when someone tells me to do something, I always look for a smarter, hackier, cheat codier kind of way to do it. It's just in my nature. I don't know if I have a rebellious streak or whether I just don't like authority and tyranny, tyranny. But in this podcast today, I'm going to talk about the seven lies that I think we've all been taught. I have too, and it's taken me a long time to get out of it. But I want to share these with you because I think it might help break you free so you can achieve at a higher level. Hey gang, welcome back. Bill Kasky, Bill Kasky Podcast. I'm glad you're here. By the way, I've not asked you to do this recently, but if you see your way clear, as my dad used to say, to give us a review. He never talked about iTunes reviews. But if you'd like to give us a review, I'd love to see it. Helps the algorithm, helps us uh, circulate this to everybody on the planet. So uh, if you see inclined, that'd be great. I love it. Today, I want to talk about uh, a flaw that I have, and I said it in the front, I have this flaw that it says when someone says to go do things this way, I always retract back. And before I go down that path, I have to make sure that that way is the best way. Now, sometimes you don't know if it's the best way until you actually get in the, in the arena and start fighting. But I think we've been taught lies in the sales profession, in the business profession. So this is for CEOs, presidents, founders, salespeople, VPs of sales, anybody who's in the customer acquisition game. So I'm going to share each lie with you, and then I'm going to talk about a new take that I have that I think uh, debunks the myth or the lie. I call it the orthodoxy. And I wrote an email about this here and put it on LinkedIn. But um, I want to go into a little bit more detail here. So are you ready? Let's go. Lie number one. You must work harder to earn more. The harder you work, the more money you make. Now, there is this grinding mentality that's out there right now that says you've just got to work your fingers to the bone. You've got to work harder than the next guy or you won't succeed. And I just don't buy that. I think the new take is that you have to be conscious of strategy. What is your strategy? For example, I could uh, make 100 cold calls on VPs of sales, and I would probably have three conversations because nobody accepts cold calls, and I might, I might get one deal or I might not, but I might have a proposal to send. But a better way to do it is to create a webinar or an online class and invite those 100 VPs of sales. 40 will show up, and my close rate then is probably going to be 5 to 10. So why would I go to the trouble of working harder, calling people, when the technology exists for me to invite them into a, a host moderator kind of event? So this idea that work harder is just false. You've got to divorce yourself. You've got to divorce time and money. And we for so long have been taught that want to make more money, spend more time. Number two, orthodoxy. You've got to convince harder to make more sales. You know, we've been brought up, sales professionals especially, have been brought up with this convince and persuade mentality that when you see somebody who's really good and, and good with language and has a great personality and they're always pitching, 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 you jump to the conclusion that's a great salesperson. I don't jump to that conclusion anymore because I don't think that's what makes a great sales achiever. And that is, I don't think it's a game of per persuasion and convincing anymore. My new take, unpopular as it is, is that you have to be a good problem finder and a good possibility seeker with the prospect, and then a good explainer. So find the problem, find what the destination is for the prospect, and then explain in common language how you can help them get there. No promises, no hype, just be a good explainer. And that way you don't have to be this persuader and convincer that but people don't even like that person anymore. I don't know if they ever did, but when I see that persuader convincer coming at me, and I know you feel the same way, you get rid of them. I don't want people to get rid of you because you have too much value. But the way to do it is to find the problem or find the destination and then explain properly the value you bring. 
Number three, you can't sell if you're not in front of someone. Get out there. Go out to the marketplace. Meet people face to face, belly button to belly button. I just don't buy that. We live in a digital world where attention is captured digitally. And if you can create a video, I've done this many, many, many times, just over the last few months, I create a video like this or others, and I at the end say, hey, if you'd like to join me on this journey, you know, email me or go to this website, sign up, and I got all sorts of signups. So I don't have to be face to face with people. Now you say, at some point, don't you need to be? Yeah, I mean, you need to be face to face or on Zoom. I mean, I'm not suggesting that if you're selling million dollar real estate deals, you can do it all digitally or by text. Of course not. But you don't start that way. So this idea that you have to be there physically is just wrong, especially at the very beginning of the funnel. Orthodoxy number four, selling to pain is the best strategy. We used to do what's called need satisfaction selling. And that was when we went out and we found the need and then we explained that how we were going to satisfy that need. And then it became pain. There was a lot of trainers in the late 90s and early 2000s, they're still around today, that say sell to pain, sell to pain, sell to pain. I don't think that's the best way to do it. I think there is pain that the prospect may have because you're not in their life. But I also think they have dreams, they have goals, they have possibilities, destinations, visions, whatever you want to call them. They're running to something in addition to running away from something. And if you can marry those together, and you can be not only a finder of a problem, but also a determiner of the possibility that they want, and sometimes they don't know what they want because they're not as astute as you are, that's where you have to help them kind of craft the vision. Most people know what their pain is, but they do not know what their vision is. If you can have uh, a situation where the prospect understands what they're running from and understands what they're running to, they will run quicker. And if you can be the one that does that, guess what? They'll run into your arms. Orthodoxy number five, you grow your business when you're more effective in front of prospects. And so therefore, we spend a lot of time on what do we say, how do we handle objections, what kinds of questions do we ask. We spend a lot of time, and I, I used to, but I don't do that as much anymore. Still do a little bit of it. But there is a kinetic chain that happens in your body. If you have a foot pain, it may not be the foot that's the problem. It may be your uh, blood cells, it may be circulation, it may be muscles in your upper legs. It could be a back problem. Maybe you're walking weird because you have a back. There's a kinetic chain. I think it's the same thing in sales. The, the chain is at some point a customer says yes or no, and we think it's all about the sales process that just preceded that yes or no. It's not. It's not. You've got to understand why are you even in sales? What is your purpose? How do you get your mind right? All of these things upstream in the kinetic chain influence how you conduct yourself in front of a prospect and thus influence the sale. So stop looking at the, at the uh, chain link right before they say yes or no. Like I hear a lot of times people say, well, you know, I should have offered them a 12% discount. I always say, no, you screwed it up when you didn't have your mind right up front. Orthodoxy number six, social media is a waste of time. You can't believe how many VPs of sales I hear say this. And these sometimes are not old curmudgeons like me. These are 50-year-old VPs of sales. And they still tell their people, don't waste your time on LinkedIn. Don't waste your time on social media. You don't need to be producing video. You don't need to do podcasting. Just get out and make the frickin' call. That is a loser mentality. You've been given a gift, as has your manager. The gift is you can do a lot for free on social media. You can capture attention. Isn't that what we want for our product and for our personal brand? Don't we want attention? And if you do the right thing, you, you have an intelligent approach to commanding attention, you will create a lot of attention on social media. So this, if you have a manager who says, you know, I don't want you on social media, you've got to ask yourself, are you in the right company? Are you in the right company? For those of you, maybe you're listening, who agree with this orthodoxy that now nah, I, don't, I don't get on Facebook, LinkedIn's a waste of time, maybe you're just not doing it right. Maybe you're not doing enough of it. Maybe you're not doing the right kind. Maybe when you do it, you're not saying the right things. 
So there's a lot of reasons, but but you've got to lose this orthodoxy, orthodoxy of social media is not for me. Orthodoxy number seven, if you want to convert more at a higher percentage, convert more sales from proposals to sales, you've just got to give more information. Wrong. New take. Information does more to harm your sale than it does to help it. Why? It's very simple. Because when you're giving information, you are in intellectual mode. Information is intellectual. If I give you a white paper because you say, hey, can you send me some more information? I send you this white paper. There's no emotion in a white paper. It's all intellect. Well, I thought we were hoping that the customer would be emotional. Haven't we always said selling is emotional? Not from our standpoint, but from theirs. Buying is emotional. They have to trust you. They have to have confidence in you. They have to believe you can help them. They have to have heard you say, oh, yes, I can take you there. They have to believe they have pain. They have to believe in the economics. It's all emotional stuff. Now, sometimes the intellectual papers or content will help you. But how many times have you been in front of a prospect and you're asking them questions and they're, they're engaged and everybody's really, you know, love it. What about you? How did you feel about what she just said? And everybody's engaged and they're, they're on fire. And then they say, well, tell me a little bit about you, Bill. And I go into a 15 minute spiel with PowerPoints. Where does the energy go? It leaves the room. It evaporates. Why? Because I've shifted to intellectual mode. So if, you're going, if you need to present something, make sure that you leave time for back and forth in between each point. They need to be emotional. Emotional just means they're paying attention to what they want, not what you want or who you are. So if you like those seven lies, I mean, you probably don't like them, but hopefully that sheds some light on the orthodoxy. Some of these things we've been taught over the years just don't hold water, and yet we keep doing the same things over and over. I had a client the other day in one of my high achiever groups, and he was talking about how he was struggling with this prospect, and the process was dragging on and on. And I finally said, Jonathan, what's the problem they're trying to solve? And if they don't solve it, how will their life deteriorate because it goes unsolved? And guess what he couldn't do? Couldn't tell me what it was. He'd been in the process for three months with a person two months longer than usual, he, could, he still couldn't tell me what the problem was. I'm not shaming Jonathan. That's not his real name, but he knows who he is. Um, I'm not shaming him or you. I just am saying that sometimes we forget. And the purpose of this episode is to remind you that we have been lied to. And if we can start to develop some new takes, it's really going to help you. Hey, if you want to get uh, to be a part of the Million Dollar Seller Challenge I'm doing, go to milliondollarsellerchallenge.com. If you're listening to this prior to June 24th, we got one coming up then. If you're listening to it after, go to Million Dollar Seller Challenge and we'll tell you when the next one is. It's a five-day, one-hour-a-day event. There's coaching. There's training. It's the, I think the tuition is $47. Uh, it's, it's cheap. Uh, I'm asking you for five hours of your time. And I think if you give me that, I can change your mindset. I can change your lead generation. I can change a lot about and to help you scale your income. Adios. See you next time. Oh, don't forget. Don't forget to review the podcast. See you. Bye.